Alchemy is the science of understanding, deconstructing, and reconstructing matter. A skilled alchemist can freeze or boil water, control flames, or even transmute one element into another. The holy grail of real-world alchemy. But there are limits. The principle of equivalent exchange states that in order to create something, something of equal value must be destroyed. It's essentially a restating of Antoine Lavoisier's Law of Conservation of Mass. Matter can neither be created nor destroyed, only changed from one form into another. In the science of alchemy, this has led to a taboo. Human transmutation. Because what could be given that's equal to the value of a human soul? But what if I told you that the impossibility of human transmutation has nothing to do with the metaphysics of the soul? It's impossible for one simple reason. The absolute miracle that is the human body. Welcome to Singularity. If I were to give you all the basic elements needed to create a human body, and the power to mix and match those elements however you want, like Legos, do you think that you'd be able to make a person out of it? In the Full Metal Alchemist manga, O3 anime, and Brotherhood, we're shown scenes of the main character, Edward Elric, reciting the basic makeup of a human body. They're all pretty horribly inaccurate, though. If we break it down as far as possible to individual elements, an average person is made of 65% oxygen, 18.5% carbon, 9.5% hydrogen, 2.6% nitrogen, 1.3% calcium, 0.6% phosphorus, 0.2% potassium, 0.3% sulfur, 0.2% sodium, 0.2% chlorine, and 0.1% magnesium, with less than 0.1% of trace elements that aren't as necessary to normal functioning. All of those elements are surprisingly easy to find. If you can break them all down, all of that oxygen and hydrogen can be derived from water. The carbon can come from coal, nitrogen makes up the vast majority of our atmosphere, you can grab enough sulfur, potassium, and sodium from a dozen eggs, bird or bat guano has all the calcium and phosphorus you could need, chlorine is in your table salt, and Popeye would be proud to hear that magnesium is found in spinach. A skilled alchemist would have everything that they need in arm's reach. Making a human being should be no harder than baking a cake if you have the right ingredients. Okay, obviously bodybuilding is a bit more complicated than tossing all the ingredients in together and mixing well. You have to actually know what you're doing, which means that we need to talk about anatomy. The father of anatomy is Andreas Vesalius, a man who established his place in history by grave robbing. See, for centuries, the field of medicine had been basically defined by the work of Galen. But there wasn't much practical knowledge involved. Vesalius got frustrated with this and started breaking the law and some major taboos by digging up corpses and studying them. By actually laying hands on physical muscle structures and skeletons, he was able to make huge advances in the fields of anatomy and medicine, eventually publishing De Humani Corporis Fabrica Libri Septum, on the fabric of the human body in seven books. It was a beautifully and lovingly rendered anatomy text, showing, for the first time in the Western world, what's actually going on in our bodies. The models were sketched in scenes and elaborate poses, showing just how much care Vesalius put into this work. He didn't get everything right, not by a long shot, but he made some huge strides. This understanding of anatomy is absolutely necessary if you want to be able to transmute lifeless elements into a human body. But of course, if we're turning elements into people, organ systems and muscle groups are just one more stop on that journey. We've got to be able to build all the different types of cells that make up those organs and put them all in place together. We've got to chain together the amino acids and proteins that will make the organelles that give rise to those building blocks. The structure of DNA was a huge question for decades, and that was only after we knew enough about DNA to know that we needed to figure its structure out. The human body is an incredibly complex machine built out of incredibly complex machines built out of incredibly complex machines. All of this matters for one simple reason. According to the laws of alchemy, 
to be able to create something, you have to understand its makeup. We see this in the North, when Ed struggles to transmute Buccaneer's cold-weather-resistant automail, since it was an alloy that he wasn't familiar with. Think of transmutation like putting together furniture from Ikea. Even if they've shipped you all the parts, you still need the instructions to follow. And this is why human transmutation is absolutely impossible. There's just no way that anyone in a Mestris has the knowledge of the human body necessary to build one from scratch. Full Metal Alchemist takes place in a world roughly mirroring our early 20th century. Let's say 1940. Medicine has come a long way since the 40s. We've learned about the structure and function of hormones, deepened our understanding of how the brain works, learned what blood types are and why they matter, determined the structure of both DNA and RNA, as well as the structure of the ribosome, the body's gene factory. We've learned the details of how our ears and eyes work, the process of metabolism, and pretty much everything we know about the inner workings of the cell. I could keep going, but I think you get the point. There's just no way that a 1940s alchemist could know all of these details about how the body works. We know for a fact that this wasn't Trisha Elric, and I'm here to say that it never could have been. In the time that passed between her death and the fateful day that the Elrics tried to bring her back from the dead, her body would have decayed long past the point of no return. But even if Ed and Al did somehow know all of that, there's still one huge barrier stopping them from ever being able to raise the dead. You know the transporters from Star Trek? They're easily one of the most iconic pieces of technology in all of sci-fi up there with lightsabers, the TARDIS, and bat shark repellent. They work by exploiting Einstein's matter-energy equivalent, scanning someone, converting their mass into energy, shooting that energy somewhere else, and reconstituting them according to the original pattern. Basically a type of alchemy all its own. And this is real science. Matter-energy conversion isn't as futuristic as it sounds. It's the guiding principle that makes nuclear energy possible. So if all of this is so feasible, why don't we have teleporters now? The answer is information. For a transporter to work, it would need to maintain the exact blueprint of your entire body down to an atomic level, with no margin for error. That may not sound like a lot, but the human brain alone could potentially hold an entire petabyte of information. That's in the ballpark of the entire internet about a half decade ago. Think about that for a minute. Everything you know would have to be stored in that pattern. The ability to walk, the ability to talk, the ability to type and play sports and read. Every memory you have, every person you know, everything has to have a physical analog somewhere in your brain. But the pattern would have to hold more than just the information in your brain. It would also need the exact anatomy, the amounts of each neurotransmitter, your entire genetic code repeated trillions of times, and you can't just cheat that one because epigenetics shows that while every cell may have an identical genetic code, the expression is different between different cells. Altogether, the computing power of the entire world, as of writing this in April of 2024, couldn't support the memory needed for a single transportation. Do you think these two boys could? Granted, there's a lot of redundancy, but even if we assume that the entire human body is 99% redundant, which is a gross overestimate, and we split that remaining 1% in half, there's just no way. These two morning adolescents aren't outperforming the best computers of the modern day. The alchemist will tell you that human transmutation is impossible because of the incomparable value of the human soul. But in reality, I think it's due to the incomprehensible complexity of the human body. It's at this point that I may need to defend myself a bit. There have been a handful of times in the series when human transmutation, in one form or another, was performed without or with minimal help of a Philosopher's Stone. If you're as big a fan of the series as I am, I'm sure you're already considering some of these moments. Ed escaping the gate of truth inside gluttony, father creating a copy of von Hohenheim's body for himself, or the hardest to deal with, Shao Tucker's chimeras. 
But I would argue that none of these situations prove anything definitively. In each case, the alchemist had a template, a pattern to build from. Whether it was Ed recreating his own body as he went, or Tucker fusing Nina and Alexander together. Think about it this way. If I were to write a book in code, using the English alphabet but with nonsense words that mean nothing to anyone other than myself, and I gave you a copy and asked you to reproduce it, you wouldn't have any problem retyping the whole thing. You know all of the letters. That doesn't mean that you understand what I wrote. Recreation does not necessarily imply comprehension. If I took good enough notes, I could disassemble my entire laptop and theoretically put it back together perfectly. But without some deeper understanding of computer science and a lot of practice, there's no way that I can make one from scratch. But even with a modern understanding of anatomy and an infinite memory capacity, human transmutation still wouldn't be possible. Because, dear friends, there are some mysteries of the human body that we still haven't solved today. Let's start with a big one. We are not even close to understanding what consciousness is. What separates you from a computer program? There are efforts to figure it out, like the Connectome or the Blue Brain Project, but these are small steps on a long journey. At the end of the day, we don't have any clue how a chemical soup and a spark of electricity can give rise to living beings capable of thought, love, and philosophy. Or what about the mysteries of protein folding? See, your genes create a long chain of amino acids that then have to fold themselves like origami into a protein. And despite their best efforts, scientists are a long way off from understanding the complex rules that govern this magic trick, a process that makes our bodies function the way that they do. We don't know why we dream, why we have fingerprints, why we yawn, why most of our DNA is non-coding junk, or why laughter is contagious. There is so much about the human body that we still have no answer for. But that's okay. No, we don't have it all figured out, but we're learning more every single day. Look how much we've figured out in the past few decades alone. Look how far we've come since the days of Galen or Vesalius. Our bodies are genuine miracles. From the deepest chaos of the chemical pathways in our cells, to our very ability to wonder about these questions in the first place. It's no indictment to these talented alchemists that they couldn't whip up a full person from scratch. But every new detail we learn about ourselves lights the way towards modern miracles like gene therapy or the cure for cancer. Because the first step to mastering our bodies is understanding them. This is Singularity, and remember to stay curious.